Hey, what's up you guys? Zarin here with Market and Hustle and in this video we're going to talk about Facebook custom audiences, what they are and how you can actually create them for your business. Now, if you are advertising on Facebook at some point, you're going to want to use custom audiences. And what custom audiences are is they are not interest and behavior targeting, which are natively available through the platform. They're actually audiences that you can create that tend to be a lot more powerful when it comes to you know running ads on Facebook. You can build these audiences from existing data that you have, such as your existing email customer list of people who've potentially purchased from you already, but there's a lot of different other sources you can build these audiences from, such as people who've gone to your website or people who have engaged with your Instagram or your Facebook page or a couple of other different areas. So let me show you, first of all, where you can actually find these audiences. So right now I'm in Ads Manager. This is actually where you typically would build your campaigns. You'd want to click on the Business Tool setting and then you want to go over to Audiences. Now, if you don't frequently use this feature, you might have to scroll down under these tools to actually find the audience section. But if you use it a lot, you're going to see it up here in your shortcut. So I'm just going to click on audiences. I'm going to let that load and it's going to take me to my audience screen where I already am going to have a mix of different audiences already created, including, you know, my custom audiences and my saved audiences. Um, so that should be loading. And that's what you're seeing now. So you're seeing my audience screen. Right now you can see all my audiences, but I can also filter by this and look at, um, you know, my custom audiences versus my lookalike audiences versus my saved audiences. So just a quick breakdown is a saved audience is basically any combination of interest, behavior, um, geo, gender, um, even custom audiences. Your lookalike audience is basically a custom audience that you have scaled. So if you're not familiar, lookalike audiences let you find similar audiences and then increase the size of that audience pool. But then your custom audience is that original um, source audience. So this is what it would actually look like if I actually went in and said, let me go and build a custom audience. So again, this is an audience that um, it's going to come from a myriad of different sources. So one that we actually talked about already was a customer list. So I actually already have an audience that I just downloaded from my email um, automation system. And it's people who have signed up for my um, paid social, uh, you know, some form of downloadable. So I have that list ready to upload and I just want to walk you what that would look like. And actually email lists are one of the most, you know, powerful ways to scale your targeting on on Facebook because once you have that email list, you know those people are really interested or those purchasers, you know, have already purchased from you. You could take that custom audience and turn it into a lookalike audience. So at this juncture, it's Facebook's basically telling you here's a few different identifiers that you can include in your seed list. Um, and it's going to be a CSV file. So you can have the email. You can also have the phone number. If you have a mobile advertiser ID, which most people probably don't have, you can upload that. Um, if you have an app, for example, you might actually be tracking that. Um, most times it's probably just going to be email and then a combination of first name and last name. If you include more identifiers, it actually does help Facebook better match the user to their Facebook profile. But at a minimum, what you're going to want is email and at least a first name. Now, at the bottom here, when you see add value information to create value based lookalike, if you have customers that are spending, you know, different amount of money on your business, you can actually put their lifetime value. So if you just let's just say have a customers that are spending $50 to $75, you can put the LTV within your upload within your um, CSV file. And this can actually help you create an audience and let Facebook optimize for the highest um, lifetime value users, the users that spend the most amount of money. So I'm just gonna hit next, and it's just asking me, is there a column for that? In my upload, there isn't, so I'm just gonna say no, and then I am going to now upload my file. Now, if you need a template, you can download a template from here. I already have a document that is set up for this, so I don't need one, and it's my paid social emails here. And I'm just going to let that be the audience name. And it's just literally one column for the names and then another column from the emails. So now Facebook is actually going to match 
it's gonna it's already taking a look at my data and it wants me to map and identify what everything is so it could already tell my email column it can see my emails it's saying email right there so that's correct it's the correct format and then now it's asking me about another column it's seeing that it's not 100 percent sure so it's country i do have the country code in there so i'm going to leave that there and now it's asking me to take action on these other uh, columns that it can't identify so if you see here the first one says first name so i'm just going to put first name and then the other ones is just extra information that's being pulled from the email source um, that I might not need to add. City, I can add in here. And state, I can add. Um, everything else, I'm going to just leave on do not upload. So now I'm just going to say upload and create. And Facebook's going to pull in my contacts and then it's going to match. So 100% of the contacts pulled in. Um, then usually it could take up to 24 hours for the audience to populate. So if you notice, if I go to this new audience right here, it says not available, populating. Um, although it says ready here, it's actually not ready. Once it is ready, something I can do here is I can come and say, hey, I wanna build a lookalike audience, and then I can select this audience to build it from. But for the purposes of this video, since I'm showing you the different custom audiences, I'm not gonna go into that. So that was um, building a custom audience from a customer list. But there's other ways that are also very powerful, potentially even more powerful. You can build them off of website users, people that have been to your website, as long as your website is tagged with the Facebook pixel. Now, of course, the most powerful source is gonna be people who have purchased. So if you say, let me go to people that have been to my website and have purchased. Now, depending on the business, you might wanna fluctuate the dates. If you've had a lot of purchases within the last 30 days, you might wanna build an audience that's more recent. Now, one thing to keep in mind is you're gonna to have to match at least 100 um, users for you to be able to build a custom audience. So if, if your custom audience doesn't have at least 100 people in it, Facebook's not gonna let you actually be able to use that to target or to build a lookalike audience and scale. So something to keep in mind. So if you have enough data within 30 days, you could do 30 days if you need to go back let's say 60 days, that's probably fine. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that if you just passed a very seasonal time of the year, you might wanna exclude that data because maybe you got some people to purchase during that time frame that potentially might not be purchasing within the following months. So for example, right now as I make this video, it's December 25th. So if I'm including the last 30 days of data, I'm gonna get people here that are potentially holiday shoppers that might not really represent a traditional shopper outside of the season. So that's something to keep in mind. Another thing I would point out is that if you don't have enough data within people that have purchased that have been to your website, there's other things that you can build a custom audience from. You can potentially look at the people who initiated a checkout or you know maybe people who added to cart. Those are very, very high intent users. You know, on average, I see people who add an item to cart 20% of them actually end up purchasing as a benchmark that I've seen for e-com. So a user that's added to cart, that's going to be a very good quality audience. And I would only use them if you don't have enough purchasers. If you haven't had at least plus 100 purchasers in the last 30 to 60 days, that's when I would say, all right, well, let me go to add to cart because on it, you're probably going to have more people that have added to cart. Now, let's just assume your website um, maybe hasn't had a lot of add to cart or a lot of purchases recently because it's maybe relatively new. Another option you have here is you can create an audience, a custom audience of people who have spent the most amount of time on your website. So you could do top 25%. You could even go down to 5%. Now I'd probably recommend for you to start top 25%. Again, unless you have a lot of data, maybe you want to do top 5%. And after you create this audience, the idea is that now you're going to create a lookalike from this data so that you can scale and go up, go broader. So that was, you know, one way that you can use, um, you know, your data from here to create a custom audience from your website and prospect. Now you could also just, you know, retarget anybody that's been to your website. So making sure that you're staying top of mind for, for those high intent users. Now, if you have a website that has a lot of different maybe product pages or categories or maybe different services, you might want to create a specific custom audience 
of people who went to very specific pages because one product that you have might be for a very particular audience, but another product or service you have might be for a completely different audience. So one thing you could do here is you can build custom audiences for these different pages and then create different lookalike audiences for both of them. So Facebook gives you a lot of different options for you to be able to, to build lookalike audiences from your website users, um, as well as from your existing customer list. Now you also have some additional options. If you have an app, you could take data from your app activity and you could use it to build audiences as well. Also, if you have an offline business, let's say for example, you're doing like, I don't know, insurance leads, or maybe you have some kind of business where the, the sale happens offline, you can also use that offline data as well to create a custom audience and scale um, your audience for prospecting purposes. Now, besides those sources, there's what's called the Facebook sources, which is data that lives on Facebook's own media. So for example, if you have any videos that you've ran organically or as ads in the past, you can actually build audiences from your videos. So you can first determine, you know, the actual content. Um, sorry, first you would determine the content type. So for example, you have the option to say, all right, let me target, I wanna build an audience of people who've viewed a video for at least three seconds. Now this is gonna be a very massive audience and someone that's watching a three seconds of your video is probably not that engaged. Um, and it also depends how long your video is. If you have a five second video, three seconds is more than 50%. On average, these, I'm sorry, not on average, most of the times what you wanna focus on is either people who've completed your video or viewed at least 15 seconds because that's gonna be the highest intent. And then the idea is once you create this custom audience of the people who've seen your video is that now you can create a lookalike off of it and scale that audience. Um, so once you choose how you're determining your criteria here, you can then choose the videos specifically. And this is coming up for actually one of the brands. I mean, I have a ton of brands here I manage, but then you would just find your videos, select them, you'd confirm, and then you'd say, all right, how long in the past do I wanna go back? Again, another thing you wanna think about is if you've had a video that, that's maybe been on, on, you've ran for multiple months, you might not wanna go back too far because someone that's watched this video maybe six months ago, you might not want that data in your pool. You want maybe more recent data that reflects, you know, engagement that has happened, you know, recently versus people from a year ago. So you might wanna pull this back to like, I don't know, 45 days, depending on the video. So video is another powerful way that you can build a custom audience. You can also build it from people who have actually gone to your Instagram page now, this is not a place where I would necessarily start unless you have a ton of engagement on your Instagram page. There's a few other places you could do it as well. Also from someone that's engaged with your Facebook page or from your events. What I would probably say is that most times, most times, not for everybody, building an audience from your website or seed list are gonna give you probably the most powerful results. Why? Because your customer lists are people who have already bought so Facebook is gonna find more people like that when you scale this list with a lookalike functionality. Same thing with website. If you go to your website and you build a custom audience of people who have purchased or people who have added to cart, those are very high intent signals. Whereas if you go to build an audience from someone who's watched a video, yeah, maybe they're interested in your video, but doesn't mean they're ready, they're the people who are gonna buy from you. So whenever you don't have this data available, maybe you just created your website, maybe you haven't had at least 100 sales, that is when I would suggest starting with these other sources of data, starting with any people who have engaged with your video, or if you have a lead form, or if you've done a canvas ad, or what's now called an instant experience, that's when you wanna use these secondary sources from Facebook or your Instagram audience. Again, just because someone follows you on Instagram or Facebook doesn't mean they're gonna buy from you. So that's why I would just never start here. I would only lean into this data um, if I don't have this data available from either my website or my custom audiences. Now, shopping is something very particular for businesses that are using Instagram shops or Facebook shops and have a catalog because what you can do is that you can actually say 
people who've looked at specific products. So if you're a business with a lot of e-com products, this is a great way to get more specific because you can actually say people who have saved your products, you can build a custom audience of people who have viewed your products and navigated to your website. I would honestly say anybody who's initiated your checkout or added to cart are gonna be the highest intent. But again, if you're new to this, you might have a very small amount of users that fall into that range. So you might wanna start something a lot higher, like people who viewed your products, so you can meet that 100, minimum 100 user threshold. Um, so anyways, I hope that gives you a good idea of what you can do from your custom audiences and how you can build them. And once you create them, they're all gonna show up here in your audiences and you could even filter by just saying, hey, show me the custom audiences. And again, once you create the custom audience, most of the time, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you can A, retarget those users, but B, you can take that audience and then use a lookalike functionality to scale it, to let Facebook find you way more people that are like those purchasers or those high intent users.